In the last exercise, I showed you how you could set up your child theme. We haven't actually made any edits at all to our WordPress website, but in this movie we will augment some of the CSS so I can show you how that we can efficiently use our child theme. In order to do this, you're going to need to be proficient in using the developer tools so that you can find the items that you're going to want to change on your website. I've already activated my custom child theme and remember nothing has changed from the main version of my website but what we'll do is we'll fish around with the developer tools so we can decide on the items that we want to change. For the purpose of this video we're just going to change a couple of things so that I can show you how this works. This is the home page of my website and here is the menu item. I would actually like to replace the home text with a logo. In order to do that we're going to need to find out what CSS is controlling these items. So I am going to open up my developer tools and you can do that by going into the upper right hand corner of your web browser clicking the three little icons. This is how it works in Chrome anyways. Different browsers might have a similar way to get to the developer tools but not exactly the same. Needless to say I'm going to click on these three buttons. I'm going to go to more tools and I'm going to go to developer tools. When I do this, it's going to open up the developer tools for me. Now I've already docked my developer tools down to the bottom of my browser because I feel that this is a more intuitive way for me to fish around and find out what items are controlling what on the page. If you use your select an element icon, you can hover over the various items on the page and you can see that the corresponding code down here is going to become highlighted. Conversely, you can also just hover over the code and you can see on the upper part of my website the items that are being controlled by the code that I'm hovering on are going to show up as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the home link. This particular link is nested inside of several divs and it's inside of an unordered list and it's an li and you can see that this one has an ID of menu item 43. Each of my unique buttons in my menu has a unique ID. This is going to allow me to hook these uniquely and individually. When I'm child theming, I actually sometimes will create what I want to have happen right here in the developer tools so I can test and make sure that everything's working. So if I'm hovered over this LI item, I can hit the plus sign right here and it'll actually create a new rule for me and I can actually click right here. And for instance, if I change my font size to something ridiculously large like 2Ms, you can see that this element is now going to update with those changes. Remember any edits that I do in this section of the developer tools is temporary and as soon as I hit refresh those changes are going to go away. Now it looks like when I turned on my child theme I lost some of the images and the images are something that I had placed inside of my customizer so if we go back into WordPress and I click customize I still have the customizer options. I've inherited those as part of the child theme but I am going to have to go ahead and add in the logo and the header images. I'll just do that really quick. I'm going to go into the header media section and I'm going to add some new images. I'm going to have the randomize upload header images clicked so that every time you're on the page, when I click refresh, it's going to randomize the images. Okay, so now I have the logo back and these various images are back. It should eventually refresh and show me one of the other images. Okay, perfect. So now we're ready to modify this home button. Now because I want to insert an image, I need to know where my image is located. I'm going to go into my media section of WordPress and I'm going to click on the 
image that I want to use for the replacement for the home page and I'm going to copy the URL right here. Now if I go ahead and select this element, let's make sure we get the LI. So I'm going to select the LI, I'm going to click the plus sign and I'm going to go ahead and use a background image and if I write the CSS for this and insert the path to the image that I had used, you can now see that that image is going to be inserted onto my page. Obviously the image is being cropped and I also have this home text. I'm going to have to adjust some of those settings. We'll do that next. I'm going to tell the background image to not repeat. I'm going to tell the background size to switch to cover, which will allow the image to scale down. And we're going to eliminate the text. I'm going to keep it there for usability, but I'm going to use a text indent and just indent it like negative 9,000 pixels, somewhere where no one will see it. Now when I do that, you can see that because the text is no longer in this LI, the LI shrinks down. So I'm going to also have to add a width of 75 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. This will ensure that my logo is going to stay in this position and take up this much room. So that's looking really good and now I have a live link that I can click to go back to my home page. Now, because I did this in the developer tools, this is only temporary, and if I was to hit refresh, I'm going to lose that information. In order to keep this information, I'm going to have to enter this into my child theme style sheet. I'll go ahead and do that right now. Here is my style.css, and remember this is my custom style.css. I'm going to go ahead and write the code that I need in order for that logo to show up and we'll save the CSS file. If I go back into my project and refresh my page, you can see that now my new logo treatment is showing up on the page. So this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted to do. Let's just make a couple of additional changes. Next, let's take the logo block that's appearing over here Let's see if we can move this so that it's positioned near the top portion of the page. Now this content is inside a div with a class of wrapper. And then there's the A tag and then there's the site branding div. I'm going to try using wrapper as a hook and I'm trying to see right now what it is that's controlling this particular object and pushing it down lower. I can see that there's a max width that's positioning it a little bit, but not too much. And then we have padding on the right and on the left. I believe that there is some other sort of element that is controlling the position of this item. And here it is right here. On the div with the class of site branding, I have a bottom position of zero. If we go ahead and minimize that, and change that to have a top position of zero, you can see that now the logo and the headline are up at the top. I'm also using a left position of zero, so what would happen if we change that to a right position of zero? Okay, so I like the logo a little bit better at the top. I'm going to go ahead and make a rule, and you can see that there's a bunch of rules that are assigned to this particular selector. It's also inside of a media query, so I need to make sure that I get the media query. And I don't really need all these other selectors. I only need this has header image home blog site branding. So I'm going to copy the media query and move that over to my CSS file. And I'll need my opening and closing curly braces, so I'll put those in. Then I'm going to copy this selector and I just need the one that's affecting the element that I'm working on. And we're going to tell the top position to be zero. Let's save the page and see if that has an effect on the page that we want. It does. Now the logo and the tagline are up near the top of the page. So anytime I go to any of my pages, since the header's shorter here, they're going to kind of be positioned right here. I'm fine with that, but when I go back to the home page, it's now at the top instead of down here at the bottom.
Okay, I'm liking the way that looks. We're just going to make one more change in this particular example. If I go to my yoga retreat page, you can see that I have a listing with some bulleted points here. I don't like the spacing and I would like to make these H3s a different color and then indent the unordered list. So once again, I'm going to inspect so that I can find out what selector is controlling these. These are simply my H3s. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the H3 color to be a red from the logo. Back in my CSS file, I'm going to make a rule for H3s. And I'm going to set the color to be the new shade that I want. I'll save my page. And if I come back here and refresh, you should now see that the H3s are this orange color. I think that looks better with our page. I also want to get rid of the amount of margin that's on my H3s. So if I scroll down, you can see that there's a margin on the bottom, it looks like, of 0.75 M's. If we change this to zero, then it's going to tighten up the spacing. So I'll just go ahead and in my CSS file, I'm going to add a margin bottom of zero. We'll go back to the live version of our page and refresh and I can see that those changes have now occurred. And then the other thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to take the unordered list and I want to control a little bit more indentation. So I would like the bullets to be indented. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to adjust the margin or the padding on the left hand side. Currently, the padding is set to 1.5 M's. And again, if I was to make that zero, I would tighten up the spacing between the items, which I like, and then I'm going to want to change the padding on the left hand side. So let's make that 2 M's and that'll create some indentation. So we'll change the margin on the left of our unordered list to 2 M's. So now if we refresh, you can see that those changes have occurred. I think I want to get rid of the extra margin on the bottom too. So let's just change this to a shorthand notation. We'll have the margin on the top be zero, on the right be zero, on the bottom be zero, and on the left, we'll keep it at the two M's. Okay, I would like the way that looks much better. All right, so hopefully here you see how we're able to modify some of the settings by adjusting our CSS and we can alter the way that the default parent theme is styling the page by simply going in and making CSS rules. This obviously is going to take an understanding of CSS since you are going to have to dig through all of the WordPress selectors so that you can ensure that you're selecting the correct class and or ID and or HTML element to be able to style the page in the way that you want.